fresh off his latest expedition into a lost world, Sonic and Pals team up with the Mario crew for another round of sports-themed action in Mario and Sonic at the Winter Olympic Games, Soki 2014. Mario and Sonic boast the same traditional style of minigames that focus on various Winter Olympic sports, but it also taps into the zany side of things with events that don't take themselves as seriously. It sounds like a good premise for a party game, but once again, the franchise is held back by shoddy motion control. Yeah. This might sound like beating a dead horse, but we're nearly a year into the Wii U's lifespan, and the big end themselves are dialing back the focus on motion-driven gameplay. Why Mario and Sonic opts to put such an emphasis on motion controls without even giving the player the option to use one of the various controller setups that offer a traditional interface is puzzling and a huge oversight. The same control issues that plagued every single previous incarnation are still present, ranging from a lack of control in events to being able to just spam waggle motions to get by. Some of the events, like bobsledding and snowboarding, utilize the Wii U gamepad for motion controls. This feels a bit better than the majority of the other events that rely on the Wii Motion Plus, but they're still far from optimal. The lone exception to the control problem is ice hockey, which strictly utilizes a traditional interface. It makes for the most enjoyable experience of the bunch, and is proof that this series has potential if the controls were refined. <laughs> Which is a shame, since this iteration offers plenty of variety when it comes to the sports and events. You have your traditional competitions that you'd expect to see, but then there's a subset of events called Dream Matches, which put special spins on the established winter sports. These tap into the rich multiplayer history of Sega and Nintendo to deliver something special, though even some of these fail to impress, like the horrendous snowball shooter game. If anything, the focus of these games should be on these Dream Matches, rather than the traditional competitions. They're almost enjoyable enough to compensate for the control issues but it's not enough. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mario and Sonic took the event structure even further, adding new modes that mix up the basic premise of each event. Legends mode adds a story premise that provides an incentive to compete, but it's just a pretty wrapper for the same core experience. The action and answer mode puts a creative spin on the format, forcing players to be more observant during each competition and mixing in trivia to test your brains as well as your digital brawn. But the novelty wears off. Completely new to the series is the option to compete online. Unfortunately, the selection of events is severely limited. You can only pick from four. While it's a novel thought, this severe limitation is bewildering. The developers could have selected some of the more intriguing dream matches to spice things up, but this isn't the case. Multiplayer mayhem is mildly amusing whether you're playing online or locally, but the experience ultimately falls flat, and the fun is short-lived. Mario and Sonic is high on the fan service with a large roster of familiar faces and a handful of special cameos. A soundtrack that contains several remixed classics from both universes and unlockable rewards like costumes for your me. Even with the amount of activities and creative take on the winter sports, it's not enough to offset the poor implementation of the motion controls.